Hello and welcome to this spotlight episode on Vauxhall, a quick look at lesser known locomotives from the early days of steam. Robert Stevenson's Planet Class of October 1830 is undoubtedly one of the most successful of all early locomotive designs, with nearly a hundred being built globally, both of the 220 Planet type and the 040 Samson type derivative. Even by later standards of locomotive building, a hundred of anything is some going. The layout of Planet would inspire British locomotives in particular for the next century and a half, there being very little difference other than in size between Planet of 1830 or Wimblebury, an 060 inside cylinder austerity built in Leeds by Hunslet in 1956. There was, however, a fatal flaw with the planet design, and that was the crank axle. Early locomotives like Rocket had used outside cylinders, but at speed they caused the locomotive to oscillate, damaging the track and the locomotive itself. The planet design adopted inside cylinders as close to the centre line as possible to prevent this, and that, of course, meant using a crank axle. And in the days before James Naismith had invented the steam hammer, it meant that these axles were forged by hand. Suffice to say, many of them broke in service, leading to nasty accidents and, sadly, the loss of life. Whilst Robert Stevenson persisted with crank axles, other engineers were not so convinced, one of them being George Forrester of Liverpool. Forrester, a Scottish engineer, was a proprietor of the Vauxhall foundry. He had no prior experience in the design and building of locomotives, but what he did have was considerable experience of repairing them, particularly those of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway. He had seen firsthand the effect of a broken crank axle. So when he received an order for locomotives for the Dublin and Kingstown Railway, he set about redesigning the Stevenson Planet to avoid the use of a fragile crank axle. If outside cylinders had been good enough for Stevenson's rocket at Rain Hill, what about Forrester in Dublin? His first locomotive, named Vauxhall, was essentially a 220 Stevenson Planet, but with outside cylinders. Vauxhall used outside iron plate frames and outside wheel bearings. To strengthen the hull, traditional wood and iron sandwich frames were used as an outer carrying frame. The cylinders were mounted at the smoke box end, carried horizontally beneath the sandwich frame. The great French engineer Marc Seguin shows the use of parallel motion, as devised by James Watt, rather than a crosshead and slide bars to support the piston rod, and this can't have been terribly successful. The valve gear was a form of Carmichael's marine valve gear. Of course, Forrest has also built steamships. This is a form of valve gear which used two fixed eccentrics. Vauxhall was delivered by sea to Dublin in October 1834 and underwent running trials. Two others, named Dublin and Kingstown, soon followed. In November 1834, the Liverpool and Manchester ordered a new locomotive from Forrester, which was named Swiftshaw. And there she turned out to be a fast and economical runner. Two tank engines of the same type were also built for the Dublin and Kingstown, and two for the London and Greenwich Railway. Whilst Forrester had overcome the problem of crank axle breakages, by placing the cylinders so far apart and so far from the centre line, it meant that there was a pronounced lateral oscillation at the front of the locomotive. This gave a very bad ride indeed and damaged the track quite badly. This is not surprising given the width of the locomotive and that the balancing of the various reciprocating masses by adding weights to the driving wheels was still unknown. Simply balancing the wheels would have helped in this situation. These little foresters gained the rather apt nickname of boxers. They were quickly rebuilt with six wheels in an attempt to make them more stable. George Forrester was not alone in adopting outside cylinders. Hick, Hargreaves and company of Bolton turned out a 220 planet with outside cylinders at about the same time, and the Rennies of London also produced an outside cylinder machine. Dr. William Church of Birmingham also essayed his own outside cylinder locomotive in 1838, which saw a return to the same layout as Rocket with the cylinders at the rear. Named Surprise, it certainly lived up to that name when it exploded in Bromsgrove in 1840. 
Yet despite the advantages of outside cylinders and indeed outside valve gear, railway engineers in Victorian Britain and indeed into the 20th century preferred the inside cylinder layout as proven by Planet for generations of locomotives to come. So that's been a quick look at Vauxhall, which saw a return to outside cylinders on the grounds of safety, and a design which would later inspire the more well-known crew type, or if you live in France, La Boudicom. If you have enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe, and see you next time on Rail Story. Thank <laughs> you.